Everyone is greeted in the wonderful name of Jesus. It's not an easy thing um, in a mining town to schedule a Saturday morning session. People work shifts. It's not a normal town. It's not a normal setup. So when you ask them for a Saturday morning, you really ask them for something big. It's many times they're off day or they're only off Saturday. And they've worked the preceding Saturday and they're working the next Saturday. So I want to acknowledge it. I want to thank my wife for a ministerial partnership. I value her. I value her very much. Um, I want to I wanna say to Eldin this morning, because I know what it is to be in a position like you to receive from your father. I want to remind you in the challenging days, in the painful days, in the doubtful days, any truly called person never gets out of doubt. In fact, one of the proofs that you are called is that the doubt always lingers around you. Any overly confident person, I challenge his calling. You bring me any pastor who doesn't suffer depressive thoughts, I challenge his calling. That is why the average pastor doesn't want it. You must chase the calling after him because he knows how big is it to say yes because there's no turning back, there's no escape clause. This thing swallows you because God is jealous. He wants you for himself. Tithe is nothing. Give your word. But this is your slankrach. You have what your father never had. Because you have your father. You don't need much more. You, you, you are born off. And therefore you can tap into the totality of his experience. Your trump card is who you are. We have said last night to one another that the issue of succession in churches under black leadership is a very difficult issue. You can take any strong congregation, Cape Town, Durban, Joburg, Pretoria. You can go to denominational churches, AFM, Assemblies, PPK, Fall Evangelie. You can go to independent churches. I can show you strong, stable churches until we do the handover. It's chaos, it's collapse, it's ruin, it's splitting. We seem not to understand how to hand over. It's the Achilles heel of the church under black leadership. It can take a stable congregation and mess it up. And what we said last night in a relay, it's only the first person who start in the starting blocks. Everyone else received the baton running. With a church under black leadership, everyone who takes over must start again. We never get rid of the starting blocks. That's what we spoke about last night. So this morning I want to see how the time goes. The water threw us out. We had to make plans. We're running a little behind time. I don't want to eat into Apostle Ustazen's time. I wanted to say two things. I'll see how far I come. Maybe I say only one. Maybe I'll see how I can compress them. I want to say one thing to leaders and I want to say one thing to congregants. This morning, in building this template for how a succession should work so that when the person who gets the baton gets it at speed and can accelerate. That's the two things we're after. He must receive it at speed and then accelerate. He must not be forced to turn back and run in the wrong direction and he must not be forced to start over again. I said to uh, Lincoln last night at the ordination, he must get us a set of starting blocks. We're going to bring them to the ordination. We're going to take a hammer and we're going to beat it up. Because we're going to hand over to Germano no set of starting blocks. Because the one of the starting blocks is handing over. Does he veer a gun, Eldin? The gun was by your pa and the starting block is pa to spring up to plant it to hard lope. There's no gun and there's no starting blocks. You are just warming up as the number two, waiting for the number one to come around the curve so that you can take it 
and accelerate. Take the work where he gives it and take it up. We're not going down. We're going up. We're not going under. We're going over. Not going back. We're going forward. Yes. And so we have to study this theme of succession. And last night we spoke about a leadership team around the senior men who know what they have and who know what they don't have. Just organize with Germano that he sent you the recording of last night. So this morning, can someone read for me? Can someone read for me there in X? I just want to talk to leaders for a second. And then to all potential leaders, X, X9. Just read there anywhere where the Lord leads you. I'll take Biki V or Dirigeus Galei. Okay. <laughs> Ananias, Ananias. 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 Come and place uh, good name for your second boy. To restore his sight. Lord Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. Thank you. Now, there's an African proverb. No one knows who's, who made that quote, but there's an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, go together. Let's say it again. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Now, one of the great dangers of the orphan spirit that has infiltrated, especially the Pentecostal church, in fact, most of our, of our artists have got no apostolic cover or fathers. The, some of our best artists produce their art in a rebellious state. That's why I don't attend a lot of concerts. I want to know who the artist is. I want to know where the artists serve. And I want to know who the artist is submitted to. Because I, I despise the orphan spirit. There was a time in the 80s and the 90s when the church was polluted by evangelists who moved alone. So the first thing that you know about anyone who moves alone, he's got no intention of going far. He's obsessed with going fast. He's frustrated that his face is not yet on posters. He's frustrated that he's not yet a known name. So he thinks if he breaks out of a system because the system is holding him back, that is why he goes alone. So if you ask him, Evangi, what do you say? He said, I don't know what to say. What do you say? He will be prepared for three nights as you eat what you like by the report of you. Even the worshippers, even the, the people who run concerts. Yeah. If, if he says an offensive thing, who do you call on Monday morning? Hey, no man. Where does the kracht that he let fall? He starts to come the concert. He cannot even start the concert by saying, I'm bringing you greetings from so and so. They know where I am this evening. I've made provisions for tomorrow morning. Someone will lead the worship. I practice with them on Wednesday night. So now can we start the concert? That's order. But the disorderly church don't mind as long as the voice is good, we can be entertained by orphans. Wieskinders, wieskinders, in die kerk. Geen gezag, net die voice en die performance. Weet wanneer moet hij jump, weet precies wat de kiem moet hij laat vallen, wat de kiem moet hij optel. En dan gaan ons mal, en dan gaan ons morgen ook een kerk toe. Dan lees hij staan net aan het tien uur op een zondag morgen, terwijl ons dien. Oh my good lord. Hmm. So, yes, Jesus. Jesus is born. We only hear about him again. Forget the part of 12 where he got lost for three days. Or his parents thought he was lost. At 30, it's the first time he's presented. 
So he comes into the Jordan. John says, behold the lamb who was slain. He comes, he's baptized. It's the first time that Jesus is now on the scene. He had to wait to be 30 to be released. He's the son of man. But even for him, the timing must be right. Even for Jesus, he can't go before his time. You have to wait. You have to wait for someone to say you're ready. Even if you're called, even if you're anointed, even if you're skilled, someone must sign on the papers to say you're ready. Comes into the Jordan, John baptizes him. Out of the Jordan, the Holy Spirit takes him into the desert for 40 days. Out of the desert, he comes into the wedding. Enjoy the wedding as nobody launched day day. The father planned a big launch for him. I don't know how the father is going to introduce him. Say, Ma trap the launch, yell up. Say, Ma seven remains, Muni Wari Uri Vain Batlasi, I get a pair of this. Right? I trap and say, Ma, so I could hear it. So still, but it's not me, my titty. I did the part by part of the other thing. Ma, a mamus. I condone my ma, my ma. My man told me, I mean, come. I did a grad in us. Then 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 I did a grad Hey, ma, on the way to be a son, man, on the way to be a son, for the men, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here, sir. What's going on? There are dear kids. Your father, what? Excel, your day. For you, so let a book call play. He's been my camera, me, for you, for the doctor. They are anti-Semites. Oh, hey. And I'm anti-Semites. Take your wang and rough. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh, no. It is. Waar krijg je dat hij dan? Goeie man. Goeie man. Pa, where did you go for training? Dit is wat die mensen zijn wang aan trek. En onze wang aan kom raak los hier bij 60. Dat die man is met die wang aan zo getrek het. Ek is die lekker nou met my man hier. Sit gewoon my maat daar op die lijn. Ek raak nou eers kwart. Ek was die. Ek was die John. Hij zei, maar zei, maar ik heb gezien hoe je van je goed niet. Hij zei, die mens het mij niet gegloeid. Toen ik hulle zei, ik heb die met een man geslapen. Oh, je gaat mijn naam recht maken van mij. Kom, kom, kom. Hij zei, hij gaat de andere dan preken, wat hij wil preken. So he comes out of the wedding. And now he goes into the temple. First time he makes a public appearance now. Luke 4, 18. He walks into the temple the first day. He's going to start now. His three and a half years of ministry is going to start. He goes into the temple. He reads Isaiah. When you read Luke 4, 18, 19, and 20, it's actually Isaiah that he reads. Yeah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. That's Isaiah. He actually says to him, that man of Isaiah that Isaiah prophesied about is here today. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hy het samen die mense groot geword, hulle wil niks van hom te doen as hy, hulle sê, is die nie Maria sy kindie, he leaves them, that is Nazareth. Then he starts his ministry. The first thing he does when he starts his ministry is not a miracle. Forget the wedding in Canaan, hy was counted hy nie, hy het dan nie sy hesh. En elke dan nie weet, jy kan nie sê nie, en die daarom lyk hulle op Ek kom preek hier soms boedersdag. Ek wil die ding preek volgende jaar. Eerst een boedersdag met een kwart preek. En ek soek ook my maai. En net soos het een preek die hele tijd. Een trukkie. Een trukkie. Vrede is as ek hier die kerk het. He doesn't do a miracle. He doesn't share revelation. He doesn't go deep. The first thing he does, he puts together a team of 12. The man is showing you he's going far. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I feel an anointing. The first sign the man gives us where this gospel is going, he's prepared to work with a team. Oh, I can't stand a lone ranger. I can't handle an orphan. I can't take it that someone claims he's called and sent, but he does it alone. He has intentions of doing it fast. He's got no plan of going far. It's too 
2022 years later, we are still busy with the thing of the man. The man meant for it to go far. The only way you have a license for going far, you must show me a thing. Touch your neighbor and say, this is not a Lone Ranger gospel. Your, your neighbor doesn't believe you. Find another neighbor and touch your neighbor and say to your neighbor, the gospel. Pay attention, pay attention. Tell your neighbor the gospel is a team sport. I'm liberating you today. You will never receive word again from someone that cannot tell you with who he moves. Never. Ask him with who do you move? What cluster are you part of? What team are you located in? Who do you submit to? Who do you account to? Who help you hear God for you? Who shapes you? Who molds you? Who says no, I'm disappointed. You approached it wrong. Who says yes, wow, you impress me. Who is your team before I receive from you? Because you and I have received this gospel not from Jesus. Yeah. We received it from the people who Jesus' team gave it to and they gave it to a team and they gave it to a team and they gave it to a team and 2,000 years later we have this thing because a team meant Jesus was going far. Jesus. Not fast. Mm. Far. Mm. Half my time I spend to calm people down and say, your problem is is hastig, you're your fingers brand. Blay where you is. Blay under your gezag. Your problem is, you soek your gezag op your poster. You stay hastig. You can't do this thing without a team. This is a team sport. Okay. The first thing he does, doesn't go deep. Doesn't teach us about the second coming. Doesn't tell us who he is doesn't do miracles. He chooses a team. So Jesus, like I said last night, was the first predecessor because he handed it over to a successor. I'm going to share some time this afternoon with Germano and Lincoln, Apostle Ostasen. And this is the teaching we're going to have over dinner tonight. We're going to have to teach him how to lead but to understand the migration that it is given to a man but entrusted to a team. We're going to deal this weekend with the idea of the set man. It's not biblical. There's no such thing as the set man. It's personal glorification of an individual. This thing belongs to a team. It has a leader, but this thing belongs to a team. In the church of Jerusalem, James was the leader of the church in Jerusalem where all 12 the apostles went to church. James was the leader. But Peter spoke on the day of Pentecost. Because they understood viet vat and viet ivati. You will not show me a church. Again after Jerusalem. Where a leader is confident enough in his own calling. Where James showed Peter. Didn't he saw? Soup for you. So Jesus has a team. So Jesus is going far. Now, the team says Jesus has risen and there's people amongst the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish council, they say Jesus hasn't risen, the body is stolen. And so they kill everyone who says Jesus has risen because they say that's a false theology. But there's one particular man, he has energy for this killing, his name is Saul. Highly learned man. Highly qualified man, connected with everyone in power. All the decision takers know him. He's a power broker, Saul. And a fatty wali. Say ye net Jesus at Opastan. He burns your house. He imprisons your husband. He says, say that net here. He's the first person to kill someone for saying that. The Bible says, at the stoning of Stephen, his clothes were left at the feet of Paul. Not only did he order the killing of Stephen, he personally oversaw, oversaw it. It's a bloodthirsty man. His theology is in error, but he's committed to that error. 
Now he's on his way to Damascus because he found out in Damascus are people who talk this nonsense that Jesus is risen. He says, just give me a letter that introduces me to the authorities in Damascus. Iemand gaan mij aankap bij wat er is. Zij hulle, Jesus het opgestaan. Het lijkt net zo. Met die vier ook nie. Daar vanaf kop haak die pa. En as ek aan die verkeerde moed is, dan val ek met sy kop. So he's on his way to Damascus. On his way to Damascus to go and do this murderous burning down of houses, the persecution of the church. A lightning strikes him. Lightning says to him, why do you persecute me? He says, I'm sorry. Sorry, hy bekeer nie daar, weerlig. As sonder wat so rauw is, jy kan nie vir hom getuig, die weer moet hom bring. Die weer. Paulus, hy is rauw. Hoe sê jy, hoe getuig jy vir een man wat jy getuig so dat jy dood? Hoe die ons my wat die weer stuur? En hy kan ook nie die weer met een swaard sla nie. Hy is blind, drie dag. Gaan naar die huis van Judas, in rechtheidstraat, straight street. One day there's a man in Damascus. They knew that Saul was on his way. This man is worshiping because hulle kom sterf. Hulle kom gaan tronk toe. Hy is ook om word gebrand. This man is in worship. I sing jou. If you can do anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord. Boy, hard club aan sê, the sub aan sê, lounge. Say, you can use me. He says, he says, Lord, whatever you do, the season don't do it without me yo i i i voel val ik raak hy gaan uit hy sommer hy sê here steer me steer me hy sê steer me what what is the belofte exal gaan hy sê here here steer me hy stel op beskikbaar hy sê stuur my he avails himself hy sê stuur my en dan die promis hy sê ek sal gaan die kracht val nog so en die lord sê in vers 11 Ananias hy sê yes lord hy sê Saul just came to me I saved his soul he's blind go find him at the house of Judas in straight street lay your hands on him recover his sight baptize him in the spirit and Ananias responds out of the deep deep worship he says Lord I have heard about that man no stare the hero no honey I know it's a deep belong and Ananias cancel the Bible said that no I said alto I said male alto, weet jy toe hy die song so op gaan stuur my toe ek sê het hy so die jyre en hy song kom op as a, as a, as a, an aroma into the nostrils of God, hy provook die jyre, die jyre wil hy vir hom gestuur het hy, maar omdat hy om so mooi a veil, he pours himself out before the Lord in worship and Anayas is the type of guy who, who, who when he commits in worship, he goes in full force, he doesn't sit in his own chair, he moves around in church he says whatever you're doing in the season, don't do it without me, and God heard him, and God is ready to bring the apostle of the Gentiles into the body, and he says Ananias, I've heard you, I've agreed you my man, Ananias says no die heren kyk nou die diep oorsip Die heren sê hom, is dit die daar nie? Maar in die ouwe by my, sê die heren van, sit af hy my sik. Jy maak my naar. Die ouwe by my, sê sit af die pep, en nog tyd van die kassette, dat die die kei wat aan raai is het. Die die kei 90. Die heren sit af. Hy het so'n rooi batterij, wat ons daar op dakles gebruik het om die dienst te record. Wat hy batterij is na my rooie? Wat hy rooie is na my oom? Daar is hy. As het ons die ding op play en record, dan gaat die dienst aan. En as die kracht van haar val ons op, hy type, gaat die dienst op nie gerecord. Heren sê, sit af. Heren sê, Ananias, dien jy nie? Dan hoort jy nie aan my nie? 
Dan het nie vir jou besluit nie. Don't I order the steps of the righteous Ananias? Don't you know that scripture? How many people have you encouraged with that scripture? How many people have you lifted with that scripture? How many anchors have you strengthened with that scripture? And now that I'm ordering your steps out of your house, to straight straight into the house of Judas, to the man named Saul, why now can you give me a teaching? It's like God can say to him, don't you fear me anymore. Yeah. It's, fine if, it's fine if your love is questionable. Yeah. It's fine if you have a spirit of rebellion. But Ananias, show some fear. I'm, I'm not operating on fear, I'm operating on love. But where love fails you, show some fear. Look at the manipulation of Ananias with God. He changes the tone. In verse 12 he says, do you not know how much damage this man has done to your gospel? I thank that here. Right? He says, do you not know? And Ananias knows the scripture that says he does not sleep nor slumber. Why does he have the guts to breathe God as if there was one moment that God did not have his eye on creation? Where does Ananias get the confidence in fact, the arrogance to write God a report, a status update, a briefing note, and say, while you were sleeping, you may not have been aware this man killed your people. He burnt your people's houses. He imprisoned your people. And God is forced by Ananias to explain himself. He says, Ananias, I chose him. He says, Ananias, it's my choice. I I don't consult. I never run a meeting. I don't have a voting system. I don't do referendums. I don't ask an opinion poll. He says, Ananias, have you forgotten that's how I also walk with you. When I forgive you, Ananias, I don't ask the permission of the people you have offended first. Ananias, why when I'm a sovereign God, it suits you? But when my sovereignty is for Saul, you are calling me to a meeting. You give me an agenda. You speak first. And then you give me a small opportunity to also say something. He says, Ananias, you are now running creation. You are threatening me with a retrenchment. You are now saying, I no longer order your steps. You will order them. I thought, Ananias, many other plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's will that prevail. Since when does my purpose not prevail? I never got the note from you the day you said to me, from now on, many other plans in a man's heart, and it is his plans that will prevail. Ananias, why do you serve me and I can't rule your life? Why do you serve me and I can't decide for you? Who are you? to call me God and treat me like a peer. I want to talk to the leaders. Many successions fail because we have Ananias leaders. They will work for the Lord but they want to choose with whom. The principal problem of Ananias is not that he's not available for the Lord. The principal problem of Ananias is not that he hasn't given his heart and his money and his service to the Lord. The principal problem of Ananias, he wants to be consulted about who will be on the team. I'm teaching my heart out right now. I'm teaching my heart out because there was no one in my circle to call my father and I to a meeting and prepare us for succession and teach these apostolic foundational orders 
So I'm not just teaching because I'm happy for the, for the leadership and the congregation that's here who will understand this thing because already your hearts are pure. I'm not teaching you to purify your hearts. I'm teaching you to guard where the enemy would like to smuggle with those purified hearts because the enemy is coming to test your purity. It's not what you confess with your mouth. It's what you overcome as a test. Come on. So I'm jealous of you. And I'm jealous of you, Garmano. Because I didn't have someone who could prepare me and my team and the congregation I led and say, this is the new covenant template for succession. Mm. We dare not surround people, put people around you and around you who can say, steer me. Maar ik zou die temen met wie kan ik gestuurd worden. When I laid my hands on Lincoln last night and I gave him which is mine to give according to X3 and I gave him the divine ability for relationship building. I was busy with this morning because a true apostle can work with anyone. He can work with those who are divorced. He can work with those who are recovered the other days from alcoholism. He can work with those who just found out the other day they were jawling, but God has forgiven them. He can work with people who don't baptize. The one thing you will never be, because it's not in my spirit, you will never be a Pentecostal only apostle. In your circle will be Duomenes. And there will be certain times before you part ways, when there's time for prayer, you will say to him, Duomeni, pray. And you will not undermine his prayer because he doesn't speak in tongues. You will not undermine his prayer because he's not water baptized. You will look at him and you will recognize the work of the blood in his life and you will honor him. In fact, Garmano, the year 2023 cannot pass without a traditional man being on this pulpit. A preacher from the Methodists or the Anglicans or the Lutherans or the Anglican because we don't undermine them. We have been washed by the same blood. We have theological differences on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and on the baptism in water. Someone cannot go to hell for having those two things wrong if he confesses the blood because the thing is with the cross and the resurrection. We don't choose. We don't choose. We get allocated. Amen. God chooses. Yes. Yesterday in the Kumbi, I made a point. Every man who has married correctly is under the misguided impression that he chose his wife. Mm-hmm. What we must teach men is that God made you believe you chose. The choice was made for you. Because as a believer, you surrendered choice at the altars. My life is not my own. Muni Maklak Samsani. To you, I belong. I give myself. I give myself away. You will not take it. This was a surrender. The only reason we left our hands in church, the guy who hijacks me, when he puts the gun through the window, my two hands go up. I acknowledge to him, yea, as the last number now. So he just shows me with a gun. He doesn't even speak. So I get out. I ask can I get my wallet? I will not go to the I will not go to the boot. It's my laptop. That's by a work. 
Die man het my klaar gewees is, alright, ek kan gaan, ek gaan my niks maak nie. Ek moet nie my slim stories kom nie. Ek lyk net so. Why? I don't want to see his face. So that he knows I can't identify him. So I'm increasing my chances of living. But my hands are up. Because I'm admitting he is in control. So when we raise our hands, it's called a surrender. I'm admitting you run the show. It's an unmature son, an immature son. Can the English men also be here in Bosnia? En jullie hebben al respect gehad van mijn Engels. En ik kan die jong volk zien, ik was klaar gemerkt, maar die heren, jou ben ik gauw die ding zelf recht maar. Baie verspot weer buiten, roep mekaar aan met jou om een meid te deel. Immature, ek het die ding zelf recht gemaakt. We never choose who we work with. The choice get made. Let me show you two things about Ananias. I want to move on to the other thing if I have time. God affords Ananias an opportunity to perform his first miracle. Go to the house of Judas in Straight Street. You will find Saul of Tarsus. Lay your hands on him for his recovery of sight. Ananias is so underdeveloped as a disciple that when he has a choice between a miracle and a partnership, he is prepared to let the miracle go. He will just not perform that miracle on Saul. How much miracles have you and I missed out on because we had an attitude about the who? The Lord send us to someone we really don't like. But in that mission was our elevation towards the miraculous. And Ananias could manifest his first laying on of hands for a blind person. And Ananias said to the Lord, How you wonder work and steer me a better name next time. The risk that Ananias is taking is that the better nam will not come to him. That he may be taken off the list as available people. Some of us may think we are available to the Lord. In the meantime, the opportunities are now bypassing us because we insist to have a choice. I'm telling you tomorrow. The guy who comes in here tomorrow morning and you can smell him of the dacha. When the service is out and you greet him, and in the greeting you smell, you hold him longer. The guy who comes in here this morning, and you can see the boxer shorts, when he broke hang, and the way we uncom, as we the beans become hanoini, and who come from more he eighty, you look here from a plate he four hours, and you call him brother. And you say, how are you? And you say, I'm looking forward to share a service with you. It's not someone you would have invited. But God brought him here. It's not my choice, Saul. Saul is not the type of guy I will bring into the gospel. I'm also honest with you now. Saul is not the type of guy I will ask to write half of the new covenant with all the blood that's on his hands. Saul is not the type of guy that I will send to the Caesar in Rome. Saul is not the type of guy that I will say, plant churches for me in Corinth and Philippia and Galatia and Iconium and Lystra. Saul is not the type of guy that I will say, raise for me Timothy, raise for me Titus, raise for me Epaphroditus. He's not my choice, but it's God's choice. So, Germano, it's given to you. But there's a second side of the coin. As a team, you also given to him. You may not have been each other's choices, but we're burying the spirit of Ananias. Yes. yes. We're burying the spirit of Ananias. 
I will release it over you. A teamwork culture that will look like you chose each other. It will look like you preferred each other. It will look like you were consulted. It will look like it was your choice. It will look like you wanted it. There's not a congregant who will ever know what you and Jason thought about Germano's appointment. As I mentioned, you're like, the lake that so was yellow and gaan oral, that lake yellow at the Lincoln gaan see and gaan say, Germano. On some night, we do full yellow oral. It's not important, but immaturity. As one says, still, me. David Dulons, yes, on spilling with Vurda, Tedens and Badami, as one says, still, my Excel son, and I still, my Dafraki met Vini, Exceli as in my choice, my chomis as for bride, me for the work for the Yerani, for the for my chomis kiss, eh? But my covenant partners are chosen for me. I made a point yesterday to Apostle Ostaisen. I made it very respectful, but he's a mature man. He understands me and he trusts my heart. I told him, Apostle Ostaisen, you're not my choice for an apostolic cover. If I think about my apostolic cover, I have about 10 characteristics, personality traits of who I want. But because he's not my friend, my gospel does not permit me input. He's given to me. He's trusted upon me by the one to whom I've given myself. I choose my friends. I don't choose covenant. Covenant is pre-selected. I come here in 2017. I'm here on a hunt in Daniel Scale. I love hunting. And Pete captures me in the hunt, Pastor Pete Lowe. He says, I'm just going to invite 20 people, 20 seniors, pastors and elders, just for the Saturday night, man. You can't come so far and we don't steal you for the Saturday evening. Just come talk about leadership. And I come that night in my track suit. I'm coming from the hunt. Just put on a track suit. And uh, I teach about Paul and Barnabas and how they were put together, but they couldn't manage the relationship and how they split. And Paul chose Silas and Barnabas chose Mark John. And both of them went to work for the Lord, but both of them were never as effective as they were, were God's choice. In the third row, such a very, a, a, man like, a man like my couple, a dark guy with a light in complexion woman. That's what the color chain. So da, can I need to have a bit of 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 a the leadership of the churches in Postmas Burk. And afterwards, this man comes to me and he introduces himself. He says, I'm Lincoln. And he starts talking to me. And he says, I didn't know in the black church we have someone your age with this type of revelation. But I can see he's deeply moved. I went into his foundation. He says to me, I don't know what to say. I don't know if I will sleep tonight. You have shaken my theology. He did not choose me. I did not choose him. 
I am given to him. When the Lord migrated me into his atmosphere, the Lord said to him, in the areas where you don't have, here is the man who has. The only choice he can make is to accept God's choice or say, it's not really my cup of tea. I will continue to look a little further. Ek soek eindelijk een ander type ouwe dat die idee vir wie ek in gedachte het. Here we sit five years later. The man is on an accelerated growth trajectory. He never went to a Bible school. But give me two more years with him. And then you bring the people with PhDs. You bring the people with master's degrees. You bring the people with honors degrees. You sit them around one table. The boy will not stand back for anyone. He will tell them like Paul. Tell them, if you are a pastor, so am I. If you are a theologian, so am I. If you are a father, so am I. If you are a new governor, so am I. The thing that kills our succession plans is that the leaders serve the new man with mixed emotions. Now here's the sick thing, I'm closing. So the new man is forced to grow the church with new people so that the new people can be his people. And the old people are the fondest people. How is that different to the ANC? Factionalized churches. How is that different to the DA? There's a faction of Zoe, there's a faction of Stianizer. How is it different to Inkata? There's a faction of Butalesi and there's a faction of the new president of the IFP. The church has been completely politicized. And this weekend, we are detoxing. We are cleaning the bloodstream. We are running up and down to the toilet. When those mark marks go. Germano, come here to the front. I'm not going to go to the thing I wanted to say to the members. Here is everybody stop us with the break, Father, and come on straight. I'll introduce Apostle Ostaisen to you and give him at least some time to do what he must do. Can I get Lincoln and Chantel behind him? Can I get Apostle and my Apostle and Bishop Mokale on either side? and my fro of Lincoln and Chantel. And can I get Odi next to Germano? Owi, next to Germano. Jonah, next to Germano. Odi Dre, next to Germano. Uh, who's, 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 who's still on the leadership? Who's, who's having leadership roles here? Come, come, as you know, leader. Come, come, sister. Come, come, come. Come, put up bikes. And your Easter. San Lanzo. Bring me oil. Ah, is he here in the plek? Oh, yes. Spandeer ons is Saturday morning, ordentlijk. I'll tell you about my story with Postman's back. I don't want to cry. I want you to know why I love this. Jesus get rejected in Nazareth, his own people. But seven days before his, his crucifixion, he goes to a town called Bethany. A sinful woman comes and bow before him and break her alabaster box on his feet. Jesus did only one miracle in Bethany. He only resurrected Lazarus. He never fed the 5,000 there. He never healed the lame. He never recovered blind eyes. Nothing. The place where he did the least honored him the most. Oh, my good Lord. You didn't know me in 2014. You would never 
have allowed me to be your apostle if you saw me in my divorce. A complete alcoholic. And Pete invites me to come and preach. I say to him, Pete, do you want the AFM to kick you out? To put a divorce man on your pulpit? He says, I'm not putting a divorce man on my pulpit. I'm putting your anointing on my pulpit because your anointing didn't fall with you because God doesn't give and then it takes back. And then my son comes out of the stump. Then my second son serves here now. I have a love affair with Postman's Buck. I don't call you Postman's Buck. I call you Bethany, the place where I'm received, the place where I'm celebrated. Can I give you a secret? I preach at my best in this town because of the level at which you receive me. You turn me into a woman here. You suck on my breast and my mouth just pour out. Extract the health of the tight for the hood that the era my voice as a compatis better need to. I love you. I take you very serious. I honor you. I appreciate the love and the regard I get here. My feet are anointed here. I have high hopes for this congregation. I have high hopes. I want to be here the day you go over to two services. I want to be here the day that the NGO starts functioning. I want to be here the day when we take the first 30 or 40 recovered uh, drug addicts and we baptize them here this morning. I want to be here the day when your studio goes live. I want to be here the day when you run the biggest evangelistic campaigns. I want to be here today when you start with the aftercare program for schools. I want to be here that day when the first deceased wake up from the grave and you said he was just sleeping and you wake him up. Those are my private wishes and desires. You joined the church and you found Lincoln and Chantelia. You didn't have a choice in who is leading because you joined the leadership. That is why you serve them with so much honor and regard and respect. Some of you are older than them, but it does not matter. You regard them as your fathers. Age has never come into anything. On the day he said the wrong thing, you forgave him. On the day he spoke out of anger, you didn't write it down in a book. On the day he took the wrong decision, you say, let us be patient. I am now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost transferring your love for Lincoln and Chantel to Germano and Zenobia. I'm transferring that regard. I'm transferring that submission forever, Saka, Simba. I transfer that what you held for Lincoln goes over now. I bind the spirit of Ananias. You are being raised right now as a mature son. You can serve with anyone. You don't have to have had a choice. The takeover is complete. The handover. It's complete. And the only thing you do now, you accelerate. These are not Lincoln's people. These are your people. Whom you have inherited from the rightful testator. So you are the heir. And these are your people. And that is the confidence in which you will lead them. When you announce a decision, none of them will ask you what did Lincoln say. They will trust that you have consulted. And if you did not consult it, they will trust you it's something that Lincoln doesn't need for you to consult. No one will say, let's first wait until the horses come. They will say, yes, sir. And what is my job in that thing? 
what do you want from me how much money do you want from me what what activity do you want from me how do i make that thing happen i bind the spirit that has bedeviled our successions that the new man can't run because he can't trust i'm ordering you to trust i'm commanding you to trust in the way that i've commanded them to love May God bless you. Come stand here, Eldin. Langs die man. Bishop Mokale. Sit jylle aan op hulle van achteraf. Lincoln en Chantel en Mel en Mami Vel. Bishop Mokale. Apostel Oosthuis en kom voor en toe. You are the first of a new thing. When I'm in Kimberley for the two nights to come preach for you. One of those two days, the Saturday morning, I want your leadership for breakfast. I have to teach them this thing. Yes. Don't say a word. It mustn't come from you. And let it push your ear agenda. Yeah. I'm preaching Friday night. I will fly on the, I think that Friday is at 11. Phew, 7.30. It's so here. So I'll eat a prat because I'm on the net for all courses are here. And I'm not going to see them fast. You are making history. You are the first boy and the first boy on this side of the railway line mm. that receives the baton under such an apostolic cloud of foundational orders being established. Mm. You will never face the Ananias spirit. Mm. It has been defeated and buried in your presence. Mm. You are presented with mm. pure hearts. Mm. Don't even when you preach say, I know I'm young, don't bring it up. They don't look at you and see that. I know I'm still inexperienced. You say that with your trusted men when you sit with them in closed rooms. You say, the reason I've called you here, Elder Nikki and Elder Dre, is I'm sitting here with the issue of a couple. Maar ek is bykie, sal jylle omgee as die kappel vir jylle gee. They will not undermine you and say, hy is kamastag die pastoor, maar hy kan nie eens counsel nie. They will celebrate you and say, what a man who knows what he has and who knows what he does not have. And he's confident enough in what he has to share the work. The work is given to your supervision, but it's entrusted to a team. Promise me you understand me. Seal this man. Bishop Mokale. Come lay your hands on him. On these two men. They are the first to receive something in this manner. These successions will work. When we come here, we will just marvel at your speed. It's all. Seal them off. As a new covenant. Successes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to your throne. We acknowledge your greatness. Yes. You are the great God of the universe, creator of the heavens and the earth. You are the governor of this world. You are the governor of the church. And we stand before you this morning in awe, in reverential fear. Father God, transferring to these two young men full of energy, full of energy. energy. Everything that you need to do in this season, Father God, they are willing, they are there, they've got it, they've got it, and they're kind of junior. Ons draag aan hulle oor, genade, hoe genade. I speak to chapter 1 over then 7, that says, content for the faith. That was once delivered unto the saints. That they will contend with everything that they have for the apostolic order, the grace that is flowing from the apostolic, the fathers, the transfer of the gifts, the transfer of Father God, of the anointing, grace, grace upon grace on their lives. We transfer to them the wisdom and the knowledge from the heavens in Jesus' name. We transfer to them whatever they need in the now, in the season. We transfer to them what we never had in our lives. We were given to us and of dragon to one another. So much for my hope. And he knocks on his father and his sin. And the heel of his Tot groter wordt verwens. Mag 